Just put a motion to come back into session. I do. I feel good about it. All in favor? Thank you. All right. Call them back. <coughs> Call them back. Call them yeah. Back. Thank you, Jill. That was awesome. Yeah, that yeah, was absolutely Jill. delicious. Same time tomorrow? Yeah. Or Friday would be great. Friday. <laughs> Friday. Hello. My wedding. Hello, Councilor Court. We're just going to call Councilor Bengri. All right. <laughs> but whose fault is that? Hello, Hello Councilor Bengri. Thank you, Sam. Councilor Kurt, you still with us? Yep. All right, councillors, we just uh, got ourselves back into session, so we're going to go with seven on our agenda of the business. And 7A has to do with COVID-19. How would you know that we would talk about that? <laughs> so that's the Emergency Coordination Center update. If you had a chance to see a little bit of the clip or the release on the media, we uh, met with Jeff and with Councillor Barnes and kind of looked at uh, the, the things that we could do to keep people, and Shem was there too, to keep uh, the population informed regarding the development of, uh, of what's going on in town. What we wanted to do, we wanted to reassure the citizens, that there are plans in place if there was a COVID-19 in our town to protect our utilities and the functioning of such, and that we would uh, do all we can to keep them aware of new development in our town. So essentially, it was a release to kind of stop the fear of people asking us, is the water drinkable? Is, uh, I mean, honestly, really. And to give them a little bit of a sense of what we expect from them is to help us with the issue. And uh, if you're sick, stay home. And uh, in fact, Jeff now released another piece of information if you're coming back from out of uh, Canada or from out of province, or if you are a missionary returning home, please keep your distance and uh, follow the proper protocol in order not to infect us all. So that's what we tried. I had four phone calls regarding that uh, uh, video. The first first reply was from Councillor Brown. I say, I really like that. She's sharp, <laughs> I tell you. She's on it right away. I mean, I never look at Facebook or whatever, but she does. And uh, I had people calling me at home, telling me it was really good to know that uh, we are aware of the different issues with utility and all that. There were quite appreciative. So we will carry on doing those type of release from time to time. We might do another video or something like that when we feel the time is right and uh, communicate with them. It was, uh, uh, Corey put it on Sunday, just before the spoken word. So that's probably how it managed to get quite a few people uh, aware of what's going on here. So did you yeah, I, personally hear anything from people? Is there, are there fears? Are there concerns? What is going on? I had two phone yeah. calls with concerns, and I'll tell you about them. Uh, Councillor Bangri. Uh, first of all, uh, to Councillor Brown, uh, my feelings go out towards you with the Councilor Kale, or Missionary Kale, Elder Kale. Probably will be returning him. And, and, He's uh, home already. It's a, it's a sad moment. No, no, and, no, hold uh, on, hold on. Let her tell you. Let her tell you. Go ahead. 
just to be clear, yeah. my son is not home and is not coming not home. home. He yeah. is in Las Vegas, Nevada, and he is not considered a foreigner there. All Canadian missionaries are staying put as of this time at 655. Well, good. Excellent. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. Um, my second question is, have we got information on our electronic billboard out front on this COVID-19? What do you want us to, to do? Yes, we do. Well, uh, suggestions uh, to defeat this and combat this, you okay. know, distancing and so forth like that. Do we have any of that kind of stuff on the electronic billboard? Okay, on this one, I will uh, let uh, Shem tell us what he put through. There's a digital sign directing people to visit the town website and view all the official sources on COVID-19. Okay, so on a digital sign, it says it says to uh, for people to go to www.cartston.ca to get the latest news regarding the COVID and get all the information they want, which is what we told them in a video clip we made and in a release in a paper and social media. My my concern is is I don't want our our administration to be tied up, or any of the office staff to be tied up with a, with a bombardment of phone calls. Okay, so I'm going to let Jeff talk to that. Okay, so we're not we're not getting bombarded with phone calls. We get occasional calls, but there's lots of information out there. We just want to direct people to the correct information. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so yeah. uh, that just to give you a sense. So from time to time. We will choose a proper media to release our information. We are getting the numbers of cases. As far as we know at this point, there are no case in Cardston, no on a reserve, no in a county as far as we know. So far. So far. So far. Uh, if you talk to the doctors in town, they will tell you it's not if, it's when. So uh, what we need to reinforce with all the people that we know that are coming back from holidaying is tell them, isolate, please isolate for your sake, for your family's sake, and for the friend's sake, and for the community's sake. And for goodness sake, enough is enough. Stay home. Uh, <laughs> We had uh, some that just came back from California on our street, and they were all about blabbing about all over the place, and were not uh, isolating themselves. It was not nice. So but so people should, the, the people should have the courage to tell them, go home, shut your door, and don't bug us. Thank you. Right. And if you need grocery, call your friend. Maybe I will even go get you some grocery and drop them at your door. I've already done that. Actually. You know, that's the proper protocol. But so, so you're aware, uh, Council, that the uh, I can't remember which one it is, but uh, that one of the pharmacies is offering uh, home delivery of yes. medication and so forth. That's Don Williams. No. Yeah. No. They are too, I believe. Well, they both are. Are they? Both are, right? Okay, so the complaint we had was actually from Don Williams. How can I stop having people come into my store? Well, essentially, my, my thought was shut your front door and deliver your, your, your pharmaceutical uh, medication by the back door. You know, I mean, that is an unfortunate uh, problem, but it's, it's fixable. It's fixed. But I yeah. also they, delivered, they delivered our place yesterday, so I know they're doing that. So, Yeah. Councillor Brown? But I also think what, what a better time for us to be compassionate, to not be judging, 
to take care of our neighbors in whatever way that is, whatever that looks like to keep ourselves healthy. Because I, I'm hearing a lot of negative, but I'm also seeing a lot of beautiful things happening. Yeah. And I, I think as a community, we need to try and focus on the good rather than the sky is falling because yeah. the world wants us to believe otherwise. Right. So, so take care of Absolutely. those around you. Be compassionate. Be grateful. Don't be a bully. And just be the best we can be. Yeah. And so that that is a very good message. That's a message we try to put through the through that video. But we also have to send that word of caution. Please help us stay safe and do your two bets worth. Uh, the fact that uh, the seniors can go twice a week early in the morning is great. Uh, it's a good thing to call all those shut-ins, uh, seniors that are shut-in, that need, uh, and even not seniors, anybody that you know that might have mental uh, issues or difficulties, those are the people you need to stay in touch with too, as much as you can. Okay? <laughs> because honestly, people are getting depressed there. Yeah. Yes. So, Council are all of our facilities closed, Jeff? Mm. Not no. essential services. No. The so senior is not. The, the, my main point of having this on the agenda was to just give you a bit of a collective update of, of the program. So obviously it's timed pretty much the same as the ice rink, so it's closed. Uh, pool can't open. Right. right now. Um, we're preparing a little bit, starting to get things ready, but it can't. Um, our office here is still open, so we have some signs if you're coming in for these types of business, but the traffic is very low. So we're seeing you know, five, six people a day as well as coming through the doors. Uh, I met with the staff in the office yesterday to discuss if we were comfortable with that level of traffic, <coughs> that risk. We have people situated, so there's some distancing. So right now everyone's comfortable with that arrangement. We're going to continue with that at least until the risk is elevated, I think. Um, public works. So, so one of the things about, let me take a step back. One of the things we did is we activated the emergency coordination which really means nothing more than we put some rhythm to how we're reviewing and updating and responding to this issue. So that's what it means. So I'm meeting with Councillor Barnes and the Mayor. Uh, we're meeting again on Thursday at 3.30. So they are the Emergency Advisory Committee. And so we're meeting with them. I meet with management staff probably every other day, if not every day. And then we're having, like, we have a staff meeting here at the office to talk about things to do, Bart's met with Public Works about, and we put things in place there to try and mitigate uh, contagion and people getting infected. So little things, for example, like the Public Works guys are not sharing vehicles. So normally we just have the vehicles and you get in one and you take it. Well now, for right now, this is the vehicle that so-and-so uses. And this is the vehicle. And they wipe them down at the end of every shift. And when we get doing construction, so-and-so will be the guy that stays in the loader. So and so will be the guy that stays in this piece of equipment. So things like that. We have separated out uh, Wade and Curtis as water wastewater operators, so they don't cross paths anymore. Uh, one focuses solely on the water plant, the other focuses solely on the wastewater plant, so that they we don't want two of our water wastewater certified guys to get sick at the same time. Um, so just things like that have, have come into place here at the office. We wipe down, sanitize doors, poles, light switches, everything every day. And uh, so things like on Thursday when we meet again, one of the big things we got to discuss is are we closing all playgrounds? Anything with a picnic table, playground structure, bench, is it closed? Because that's what's now happening. Red Deer, Lethbridge, Calgary, Edmonton, they've all gone. Yeah. Um, so we'll have some of that discussion. We haven't had direction on golf course yet, um, what happens there. What about the seniors' facility? Well, they can have it open if they keep uh, uh, gatherings under 50. So we put a big sign they, on the sure. front door there. Bennett Foundation has got a lockdown on the foundation yeah. in uh, Diamond Willow Terrace and also the Chinook Foundation Lodge here. So we're just doing business continuity yeah. planning in each department, which I've given you some mm -hmm. to show how we're trying to work with some of that. It's preliminary. Councillor Self. Okay, so when it comes to the parks and playgrounds and stuff, you'll make that 
decision and then notify because I've had a citizen go and shovel off the pickleball court because they're getting crazy. He was just yeah. there today. <laughs> And they want to start playing some pickleball. So, so that's an interesting one because there isn't much that you touch. No. Nope. Right? You have your own racket, although you're swapping a ball back and forth that you were swapping back a hundred times. But, so we do need to have some discussion about what is the breadth of the court. Because there is social distancing if yeah. it's just yes, you and is. your spouse yeah. and you're playing at least six yeah. feet apart. <clears throat> so we're thinking it's more of those structural things like there is no chance we can go down to Lions Park and disinfect that great big web. You know, every day, like... You could with a fire truck, but that's well, about it. potentially, yeah. If we get a, a crop duster or something, we can go over the ball, but that carries with it some other yeah, liabilities. Well, we're just going to put signs up that these are not disinfected and they are closed as, as part rights. of COVID-19 yeah. precautions. And mm -hmm. We think we're going to see direction from the province on that in the next couple of days. That's why we've kind of waited to see what comes. The water can close down. The yeah. park can yeah, close there's a lot of closing. So. And just so you know, um, we were doing some research on the virus, and it said that uh, on metal, yeah. it's like nine days. The, the virus can last nine days. So. On close eight hours or something. Yeah, it'll show sunlight and then it'll sunlight Burn it off. So I guess to my point, no one's going to kick anyone off the pickleball court if they, because the, they're practicing. Yeah, some yeah who is who's going to enforce all of these things? Yeah. Well, again, I think council court. Your question is more of a, we have posted that this is not That's safe. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yep. why in the world would you do it? First of all. Yep. Um, yeah. So we're already starting to see some of the staff impacts. Um, so we have three staff in any different level of self-isolation right now for the two weeks, whether it's due to travel or a sick family member or doctor's orders. So we're starting to see impact on staffing. We, we have it in a couple different departments, but it's manageable right now. So you know, we're okay. We have somebody coming back next week and then somebody the week after that. And, and hopefully else, nobody else goes down. But when we met with the emergency advisory committee, the focus was the areas of water, wastewater, garbage, and fire. Yeah. Those are the ones that we have to manage that are our, our yeah. coordination pieces. So you right. saw in the form I gave, we have contingency plans in, in those areas, plus a, a few more, um, even with electrical. So we're trying to keep, our, for our example, our electricians don't go together in a vehicle right now. So they're trying to keep that separate and, and keep some space and some things like that. And then we're just going to see how things unfold with parks and recreation. So we're not hiring seasonal staff very much. We The parks are going to grow and they're going to need, we can't just let everything go to seed for heaven's sakes. So we are hiring some staff so that we can keep things up. But right now, baseball has been postponed until at least probably mid or end of May. Soccer is probably on hold until there's word about uh, that they can go. So we don't have a bunch of programming that's pushing needing to get seasonal staff here at the end of April like we normally do. We have two guys, we have three people at the golf course, but that may be where it holds for a while. You know, we just may not need a lot. So um, we're just having a lot of those discussions right now, and we're not doing toolbox meetings at Public Works, for example, in the morning. And we've created an online task database that everybody can put what they need to do and what needs to be done on, and they all have it on their phones. So we're just doing a few different little things like that so that the guys don't have to be right next to each other all the time. And, uh, it's working okay right now. I mean, my, my only fear is that people don't abide by the isolate yourself when you need to, and that we as a town have to declare a soul because we need to now control the movement of people. And that's the next step, right? So if people don't play the right way, that won't give us any other choice than to no. cause them to be restricted. And it's no fun. I was at, at the grocery store and somebody who was supposed to be self-isolating was at the grocery store and there were senior citizens there. I was walking in, they were walking out and I looked at them and just thought, like, what are you doing here, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah, Ben, uh, we laugh, but you know, yeah, when you think that uh, the the disease sometimes does not appear until 14, 15 days after you, you uh, got infected, 
That's a little bit of a scary uh, proposition when people are so stupid. I'm sorry, that's stupid. It's, it's well, selfish. The other thing is, not all of us know who those were, that, or snowbirds that have just come back. I mean, I could run into somebody in the grocery store and I would have a clue whether they'd been out of the country or not, right? So, I mean, that is maybe another message we can, we can put even stronger, a little bit of Trudeau style. Enough is enough. We don't want to see you in a grocery store when we know you just came back. Maybe we can do it. Yeah, maybe we ought to do that. And I wouldn't mind doing a video with that type of message. Enough is enough. That's right. And so you saw one. I saw, I saw some doing the same thing. It's not good. However, there's this little thing called free agency, and you can't cure stupid. So we cannot tell people it's up to them. No, it's, you must tell them. We no, have no, a responsibility. My point, my point is, we can. T you can tell me all you want. Oh, sure. However, it is up to the person, the idiot, to not self-isolate. That is an unfortunate um, action that will have a rippling effect and take lives out, which is unfortunate. But it is not. You know, I've had I've had people messaging me and calling my house saying. I've seen people and they're walking up and down Main Street and why hasn't the town done something about it? And I'm thinking, well, that's, that's not where we're at right now. And this was a week ago. Sorry. Yeah, we don't have that authority. No, that's, that's, that's not us. And they, but they thought it was. So I think it is important for us, like Jeff and Shem and everyone is doing and the mayor is, we've, we're, it's our job to put the information out. But yeah. it is not our job to bully the idiots into making the right choice. I mean, it is on their shoulders. Except, except that when you have a soul, then it becomes a municipality ability to enforce. But we don't have the enforcement personnel. That's what yeah. the problem is. Do that? <laughs> right? That's what we don't have. Yeah. And that's another level of the provincial government's emergency plan. They can yeah. invoke an emergency measures plan. They've been reluctant to do so because of the very issues that you're talking about, Council Brown, that how do you take people's choice away? But if it means that at some point in time that there's an increase of incidents in smaller communities like ours because of the idiots, right, mm -hmm. then, then there'll have to be some enforcement somehow. And that's where I think our CPO and, and the RCMP will have to come into play and do what we can. But it's certainly not up to it's us to manhandle people off the street. But you can give them your opinion if you see them. Okay, there is another issue. The, the, the vagrant on our street oh. are accumulating uh, like, like a, club. a club. And they are totally oblivious to the issue. And as Jeff say, they're probably not the one who are in contact with anybody coming back from uh, sunny, sunny uh, countries. And so they're possibly not carriers and won't be. And I want to believe that is true. But it sends a wrong message regardless. They are panhandling more than ever right now. Right? Of course. Yeah. It's community transmission now that's the issue. Yes. It's not people coming from overseas. So yes. They are a problem. Agreed. Okay, as a self-isolator that just came from a sunny country, <laughs> I haven't been in any stores. On the way back from Calgary, of course, you have to go to the bathroom, but my wife and I are smart enough to wear rubber gloves or, or use a hand sanitizer. But you also have to be careful. Uh, I was re watching Facebook today. Uh, Dr. Telford says, people are going crazy. Go out for a walk. Keep your distance. Go outside. And right below that, somebody's going crazy on somebody else for being outside because they've been away. I talk to the RCMP, and you're not supposed to be outside. I don't see the RCMP have ever said that. You just keep your... The RCMP has nothing to do with it. Your social distancing, that's the big deal. Well, what I said is this. There is two different things, and people are confusing them. Yeah. It's confinement and isolation. It's not the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. If you are on confinement, you are under strict order not to come out your house. If you are in isolation, that, if yeah. you are in isolation, you can still go out and keep your distance 
and uh, be okay. But the issue is with people who come back from travel, they want them confined. Do not stop for grocery store. Do not stop uh, to say hi to your kids. Go straight to your home, shut the door. Call someone to bring you your grocery, deliver them at your door. Don't open the door when they're still there. And that's confinement. And that's what I want people to do with the snowbirds and anyone who is going to come back crossing borders and even crossing provinces at this time. So that's a difference. Isolation is not the same as confinement. Confinement is one step higher. Yeah. So what am I? Am I confined or am I isolated? You are confined. I don't believe that. You quarantined. Well, according uh, to the government... Uh, I've read all, my wife reads all those things. I've read all those things. She's a nurse. We, we've interpreted it that you keep your distance, social distancing. No. And I don't believe I'm confined to my house and I can't step out the door. And I haven't been, but I haven't been around anybody either. No. So it's it, all interpretation. I Start don't... If knock on my door, then I'll deal with it then. I, I hope it's, uh, you see, then, then the, the government is not sending the message uh, the proper way. But from all what I heard, especially yesterday from the chief medical officer, they're really telling you to quarantine right now when you come from, from out, outside of uh, the country. They really do. And uh, that's what I understand anyways. And I'm not a nurse, and I agree, and I'm not a doctor either, but I can only go by what I, I, I'm getting for release every day. And I, and I just go how my wife interprets it, because she's right in the middle of it. And when she goes back to work next week, we'll keep up the same self-isolation, because she's going to be in that situation. Right, where, right. Where it might come around. You're but exactly right. I don't right. sit inside my house and stare at four walls all day long either. I'm not, oh. I'm not dumb enough to go contaminate somebody. Yeah. Well, you know, as long as, as you use your, your uh, wisdom and realize there's others that can be at risk, right? And yeah, especially I yourself. That. Especially yourself don't want you at risk, especially with your wife, and we want her healthy in, uh, in a place of work, good grief. There's enough people infected in that field. It's terrible. Just because people don't tell them that they're sick. They just show up and have not been swabbed. Anyways, so anything else? Let's go on the 7B, COVID-19 municipal utilities slash charges deferral. Uh, deferral. <laughs> I'm starting to put the French word. <laughs> Smart. started last week when Kenny mentioned that they were going to instruct the retailers of natural gas and electricity to defer payments uh, for up to three months, I believe. And he was encouraging the municipalities, well, he said it's a thing that municipalities should do the same, but there's been nothing come to municipalities on this program to date. But we are seeing, like the city of Lethbridge, for example, yesterday was one of the first to say, okay, we're going to follow suit and we're going to defer, you can defer your utility payments, your municipal Jill and I have had some good discussion, and bless her heart, she's waited two hours to come to this point on the agenda, but two and a half hours. I just wanted, she wanted to come and listen and how we might want to do this, but there's a number of ways, if council wishes to go down this road, we can look at utility deferrals and tax deferrals. Yeah. And there's some risks to both, um, but again, I'm just speaking of deferrals. So let me explain maybe what we're thinking, if you want to entertain this, could work. And what we think is the simplest way to administer these things. And both of them simply include charging as normal, but waiving penalties for a certain time. So in the case of utilities, it is reasonable that for those who choose to defer, by the way, I don't personally recommend that people defer, but I cannot speak to every individual financial situation. I can't do it. The deferral is troubling if it's a particularly large amount. But 
we could, in theory, say that we will not charge any penalties on overdue utilities until July. Mm -hmm. For example, so if you could only pay a portion of your bill and a portion went overdue, no penalty on that. And next month you could pay it all, but then the third month you couldn't pay any, but there wouldn't be any penalties for three months, and we would not disconnect anyone, and we would not load, limit, or shut anyone off of water or electricity. So those are some things we could put in place. Now, what's going to happen inevitably is somebody that has a, anyone take your average NMAX bill at your home, you're probably about $300 a month with uh, at the municipal charges, plus if you buy any of your utilities during that. If you defer that three months, now you have a $900 bill. In fact, you have a $1,200 bill in three months is what you have. You have the three months plus the next month. That's right. And you probably can't pay that. No. Even if you're back at work and everything is okay again. So what we see happening is at that point what we would do to those who inevitably can't pay off the balance before penalty is we would allow them to break that payment up over 12 payments and pay it over the next year. So they owe $1,200. Okay, great. We're going to break your payment. You're going to pay $100. We're going to take $1,100 over the next 11 months. And now you're going to pay that over the next year. 100 bucks a month on yeah. your bill. For yeah, so month. instead of 300 you pay 400 Yeah, so then they pay $400 a month for the next year. That's It's inevitably going to arise. We have to consider yeah. that. Yeah. So that's something we think, because we don't want to get into this notion of not billing every month, because no. we have meter reading contracts. We have all this other stuff we have to do from a regulatory point of view. So we're saying bill as per normal. But you would have the discretion if you choose to waive. Now on taxation, it's a bit of the same story. Where on taxation, there is a penalty July 1st of 8%. Yeah. It's quite a punitive one, actually. Yeah. And the next penalty is October 1st of 4%, correct? Yeah. Thank you. And what we, what we were talking about, one of the things you could do is simply waive the July 1st penalty. Just, just discontinue it for this year. Essentially what that means is everyone's taxes are due by September 31st, right. except we have a, about, uh, is it 300 and some properties? September 30, okay. 31st doesn't exist. The prepayment program who have already, they're only two months away from having their taxes prepaid. 500. So 550. yeah. Yeah, so we have about 550 of those properties. We have a good proportion. So my feeling is that we wouldn't delay their final payments because again, they only have one or two payments within the time, the trying time. They've prepaid over the last year. And so, but for those who aren't on tip, you, we could potentially entertain, now you're really just making it the taxes aren't due until September 1st, mm -hmm. is what, what would be the, the thing there. September. September. Uh, October 30th, sorry. September yeah, yeah, 30th. Yeah, September 30th penalty would be October there would not be a July penalty. Again, for a lot of our, especially if you're a larger business, that could be a lot of money you're deferring. But in that case, I'm also not entertaining that we enter into tax payment plans with them over the next no. year either. We're just postponing. No. We're, we're, we would be potentially removing the penalty in July. That's about it. And it wouldn't apply to prepayment. We're paying them interest anyway. We're paying interest on tip anyway. So I don't want to start messing around with the final payments of tip people and holding those off until September because they start back on them next year in August. Right? Yeah. I got to keep confirming, Jill. Um, so I just throw that out. If you want to look at going down this road, those are some of the maybe simplest administrative parameters we've thought of that may be helpful. All right. So. I really believe that the more we can offer at this time, the better it will be. As you said before, people have uh, their agencies that can choose one way or the other, knowing that it's not going away, mm -hmm. but uh, there is a solution in between if they choose to exercise it. How do you feel about it, Councillor Selk? I agree with administration and in essence it's pay me now or pay me later but you're gonna pay me well you're going to pay me but you won't have the penalty so I'm not going to I'm not going to kill you for for uh, not paying right away I, I think that there will 
obviously be some people that are going to be affected, but I think it's important that we put this out as information to let people know that there's still going to be, you know, deferring. Deferring doesn't mean deferring it's a gift. Mean you've been waived. No. And they need to understand that, that they're better it, off to budget their money, whatever they have, that they can afford to make partial payments, but don't just let it go because it's tough getting caught up. Yeah, the world well. is. I mean, I can remember before I was married, I let things go for a while, and I was put 900 bucks in rears and holy mackerel. That 900 bucks at the time when you don't make a lot of money takes a long time to pay that back. I mean, thank goodness I did. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. But it's a choice you make, though. Pardon me? It's a choice you have to you make, have right? To make a choice, but, it, but financially it can be really tough. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm afraid that there will be people that will say, oh, man, I'll just put that up. Now I can get that other thing that I've wanted to get because now I'm 300 bucks okay. to good. You know, so, there are people out there that will do that. So, I know them. So that brings back another, qu oh, that, that brings back another question. Is this available to all or you have to show the need? To me, I uh, to me I think it's available to all, and I agree. And I think it's, and I think it's. I mean, my opinion is that it goes to everyone, but it's. I think somehow it needs to be made crystal clear that this isn't a waiving. Exactly. This is simply a deferral. Yeah. You still have to pay that land taxes by September 30-ishness, something. That is the final day. We're not then gonna bump it till January 1st, like. This is, and this is why we're doing it. I think that's also the yeah. second part of this equation. Yeah. So we're doing it for taxes as far as not bringing up 5% to them at this time, which is hard. And now we're also helping them with, with their land taxes and utilities. The utilities, yeah. utilities scare me, scare me way more than land taxes somehow. I don't, I just feel like. Utilities just can escalate so fastly, and you can't get them back. yeah, I just uh, yeah. You get well, that's yeah. my perspective. Yeah, I mean, from anybody who would budget, you would know that it's tough to catch up. But if you're a business and you don't have a cash flow, but you know the cash flow will come when you resume business, and the cash flow will be yeah. there. Yeah then that is a situation that is uh, helpful, yeah. right? Yeah. So are we okay then to move along in that direction? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so let's do it. Councillor Bangry, you're trying to say something? Oh, Councillor Court, are you okay no, with agree. that? I'm okay. okay with that. I agree also. Okay, all right, so that's fine. Yeah. Which means there will still be normal charges, but no penalties will be applied. Agreed. Until, and we'll probably have to do it where it be starting the first of the next billing cycle. So something like that. We'll sort that out. For yeah. You. And then on taxes, and <coughs> if anything we missed here, please jump in. But we will <coughs> waive for everyone the July 1st penalty. So taxes will still be due June 30th. But there will not be a penalty for non-payment until September or until October first. Right. So all payments need to be made by September thirtieth right. for no penalty. And we need to make it really clear that deferral doesn't mean forgiveness. Right. Right. Yeah. And okay. COVID, we want that on there. And we yeah, want it as a COVID, a COVID uh, measure. This yeah. is why we're now, doing it. If I might, Mayor Jill, did I miss any cautions or concerns we talked about over the last couple? Please go ahead. Um, I think you've pretty much got it. One thing I mentioned just with the utilities escalating quickly, taxes is a one-time thing per year, so it's not really that big of an issue to defer it to October. We have the cash flow that we can, yeah. can right. do that. Right. Um, it just gives them a little bit more time to pay for it. Yeah. So I think that's an easy um, boon for the, um, the citizens. Other than when, when we get into person here or there, then it becomes a lot more um, of an issue administratively to deal with, mm -hmm. as well as just how do you pick and choose. Right. So doing it blanket overall, I think, is... It's a better one. Okay. We were, we were really Thanks. concerned about what if council wants to 
Right. Well, this is why I brought it up, because can we act as judge is pretty bad, right? We don't have the financials of people. Yeah. It's not appropriate. Yeah. And I'll do it. One other thing, one other well, thing yeah. I was mentioned, and this is just a good thing for us. I've been talking to some of our neighbors municipally, because we've all been having some questions about these deferrals, and we have municipal neighbors who, who cannot can do this because they can't cash flow. Right, that's the difficulty. And if you're a municipality that can't, doesn't have, you need those taxes in, in June because it's this is the getting, this is the uh, what's the word, the lean time of year for municipalities. Mm -hmm. So we're going into April, May. You know, we kind of spent our year's worth of taxes, and so we're in a fortunate position as a municipality that we can offer a deferral because many can't. Mm -hmm. so, so how many people do you think in our community would defer their taxes? I've just, do you have kind of a number? That no, you I don't know. I mean, for me, if I wasn't on the tip, well, I'm not anymore, but if I was on the tip, I wouldn't give you my money until I had to. 100%. I mean, <clears throat> here's something that I'm looking at. Bob is closed. Ming is closed. Source is closed. That might help them. Oh, I, I think it will. One of the things I've heard from the businesses is the province has deferred payment of income tax until April 31st. Yeah, right. And businesses are saying that is really big for us. Yeah. Because we hope to be cash flowing by summer again. Mm -hmm. And so that is not a bill we could afford to pay really well in May. Yeah. But that is a bill that come July or August may be much more palatable. Mm -hmm. So this is the same type of idea, for, idea particularly for the businesses, that this may be a, a help in their cash flow situation. Councilor Zell? I think on an individual basis, <coughs> too. <coughs> There'll be those who will receive um, income tax returns yeah. somewhere along the line because the federal, federal government's yeah. putting off the ta tax yeah. filing date. So maybe somewhere down the road they come into some cash in that respect and they're able to. Yeah, you, ho you will hope, yeah. Well, and hopefully also you're getting your unemployment by then too, right? Like there's a lag time on yeah. all of this. Yeah. So it just it gives that the to the people uh, just a little bit of lag no. time. Yeah. <laughs> We will put that together right. and give you what that looks like formally. Yeah, thank you. Can, can we lend those communities some money, Jeff? I'm just going <laughs> to I just want to, I want to extort them as much as I can. 20%. I'll talk to them. Right. Well, Tim's on board. Counselor Suck, I put a bug in your ear, didn't I? You did. <laughs> I see an opportunity here, Counselor. I just... I see that. <laughs> Scam. Scam. <laughs> 7C Gulf Coast food truck proposal. Jeff, maybe you want to address that sure. one. This is, this is something coming from Anthony that's quite interesting. <clears throat> He's been looking, Alex, before he left, was looking at some upgrades and renovations to the building to accommodate a greater range of food sales. So a couple of things you require is, for example, if you want anything deep fried, you have a range where you've got fire suppression, HVAC, and then number electrical. We got a bunch of 220 and electrical. And so we got looking at all those costs for that place and hoping it's gone in a couple of years. The question is, can you recoup those costs? And not really. Once you've built it into that location, it's pretty tough to reuse or to recoup. And so Anthony threw out the idea, what if we bought a food truck? It's fully equipped. We set it there. If after a couple of years it doesn't work, you sell it. What? And you might have been out 10 grand, but you lose a little bit on the depreciation and it comes with your fire suppression and all that stuff. And then if the building goes, we don't lose any of that investment that we made in the building. So it's simply kind of a conceptual idea to see if there's an appetite to deliver food up there in a different way than trying to retrofit that building because that's proving to be difficult and expensive. So he just wants to throw it out there. He gave me some examples, a new one retrofitted on old chassis, 55 grand, I think it was, 45 there's a used one for 38, different things like that. So somewhere in that um, in that area. But just an idea that, uh, or 46, sorry, 46 is what that new one is. So just something to float out there for some feedback. If there's an appetite as part of our capital spending to look at something like that, um, or do we continue to offer kind of the level of food service we've offered up there as we are now? So Since I don't know what kind of level of food they are. Uh, who's 
Councillor Bengri, uh, Councillor Brown yeah. is going to speak first and you'll speak after. Thank you. You're so welcome. in regards to what kind of food, there's not a lot of food going on at the, no, at, no I idea. mean, it's, it's very minimal. No. It's a sandwich, it's a granola bar, it's a chips, it's a pop, it's, you know, steak and lobster. Okay. Chips anyway, and it's chips and pop. It's, okay. Anywho, my thought on this was, I mean, I'm nervous about spending this kind of money this year because this year just seems to be going so well so far. Just a little concerned <laughs> with how that's all playing out. I, and I was also thinking about this this week when we got it because I thought maybe for the first year, because it's you know so fantastic right now, would it be not uh, a little wiser for us to maybe look at having um, having somebody coming and doing it? For, say, uh, soccer, we had a food truck come in, and they gave us X amount of dollars, and they kept X amount of dollars, and they just ran the food truck. And that was way more profitable for us because we didn't have to buy the stuff, keep the stuff, handle all of that nonsense, mm -hmm. and they just dealt with it. I'm just wondering, I just would rather keep that, you know, 55-ishness in my pocket, the town pocket, I mean, don't spread that around. Um, yeah. It's not mine. Um, I would just feel better about that. I just feel like this isn't the year. And I mean, y'all know that I have been a pusher to get things going at the golf course. And I wanted, you know, the food trolley thing that we bought that haven't used. All of that. But I just, I don't know. That's just a thought. Just wondering. Well, uh, Councillor Bangri, you wanted to say something? Councillor Stelkafter. I, I agree with Councillor Brown that the, this expense right now, uh, the way things are going, I think is a little bit far and above what we need to do. But I also have a concern. If we offer a food truck service out there, where are these people going to sit and dine when their restaurants are closed down? And this social distancing is a big thing. Not doing it. I don't know how those two things are Can I answer that? Yeah, go, go ahead. So, well, we wouldn't have a food truck going out there if COVID is still alive and killing people. Like, everything would be completely shut down. So we would only use the food truck once we all start breathing again and this COVID goes to sleep. Right now, we do not know what will happen to the golf course this year. Yeah. We're still waiting for the, the ministry to give us guidelines on the recreation campgrounds municipal campgrounds and golf course type of thing. We don't know. So, Thank you. So okay. I'm curious if we can <clears throat> enhance our food experience at the golf course, but do it in partnership with a business in town that could use the business and do exactly. something and do something there where we're not let's not let's not get into the food business just yet. Because mm -hmm. I, I think this is a novel idea from, I think he's thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. which I really yeah, appreciate. Sure he is. But is there a way that he can work with somebody in town to enhance our food experience at the golf course and help them out and help us out? Agreed. So okay. when we were, as you know, when we were on the golf course uh, committee, we brought up this very thing. We talked about, could we not hire, you know, so-and-so in town to be making us fresh member granola or whatever they were talking about? It was all of... Buns yeah, cinnamon buns or whatever. And Alex had brought up the fact at that time he was he just said the trick is, are we going to sell it? Is it going to sit? Where are we keeping them warm? Where are we you know we just don't have the facilities within that fabulous little Hubble of a building to take care of this. You meant Hubble, I meant Hubble. It's complete <laughs> Hubble. <laughs> All right, so Councillor, if I hear you well, what you're trying to say is. There are so many unknown at this point that let's postpone the idea. So I just, when I read this over the other day, I just went online and looked at food trucks for sale. There's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking that's not a good sign if we've got food trucks that are in Alberta, just in Alberta. Yeah. There's probably 35 or 40 food trucks. That are just well, because they were in the old patch and uh, in the old patch is dead. Yeah. So that's why it idea, is but, yeah. timing. I just do want to mention something you asked at the beginning. Last year, Alex did reach out to food truck owners in the region and ask if they would come and be there on 
certain dates a week, and they and have lots could, of clients. Yeah. So they're interested in events. They want to go where there's yep. a thousand people in yeah. six hours, right? And yeah. then go home and sell up. Yep. And we were not able to get. We did try. Mm -hmm. I say Alex did. They, he did try to see if we could get someone that would say, "Would you be there Saturday, Sunday, for example?" Right. And, and the answer was no. Mm -hmm. So there isn't an appetite from the current owners. And I agree with you. It's that's even ebb and flow in the community. So there's two that used to be in the community that, that they've sold them and aren't in the community anymore, right? I don't think our if we did it. That the whole conversation we've had, but if we did it, our expectations are a little bit different than that private operator that has it because of we're course. simply trying to enhance the service yeah. Yeah. that we're currently providing. So our, our goal's a touch different. It's obviously profit motivated, there's no question, but not as heavily because we're just trying to enhance what we have there. And this to be used at other venues, could, could be used yeah. at the power, could be uh, used, which we always have tough time getting people. So question on that then. So what about that fabulous little vehicle that we bought last year? Yeah. So it's, you know, pop and chips and sandwiches or whatever. Could we not, um, could we not kick that up a notch? Like I realize because last year when Councilor Stuff and I brought it up, you know, are you out there? Are you, you know, doing the pop and chips or whatever? And, and Alex would bring up the fact that well, the ice is expensive, you know, we want to make sure and we got to pay for somebody's wage to be yeah. there and we got to keep the ice going in it and we don't have, like there was all of these things and then the thought to me was, well, why do we have it then? Yeah, yeah. Like, good why question. did we buy it? Yeah, if it's just going to sit in the shop. Yeah. I think it got used three times last year. So It really only makes sense when you have a very big tournament or a very busy day. Mm -hmm. we, we lost a ton using that thing last year. Right. It, yeah. it, not make fiscal sense when you went out and sold four bars and two bags of chip in an hour and paid a guy 18 bucks to be on there. Right. Right. So that's yeah. Councilor yeah. Stelic. Yeah, I, I think that that was Alex's take on that and brought back to the committee was that it was a money losing proposition yeah. or whatever. But back to my point, maybe Anthony can reach out and think, you know, he's doing a great job thinking outside the box, but. Try to enhance the food experience, yeah. but use our local merchants, local so, restaurant tours somehow. Can pizza? Can uh, Councillor Barnes, and then I will ask a question. As far as food trucks go and food at a golf course, when I used to live down in Ontario, I, I was a caddy, and if you were to tell me that pop and chips and a sandwich was available, I'd say, what the heck? It's got to be good food. It's got to be at least a nice burger and some fries and, you know, something that's good and, and warm. Nobody's getting excited over sandwich. I can bring the sandwich with me in my backpack, you know, but that's just my thought. If it's going to be a food truck, it should better be somebody that's got good can, food and a, and a bit of a variety. Okay, can, can I maybe ask something? Nobody but I'm just wondering if the issue is to have food that may sit there and not be sold, and then it's a waste of money also. Is there an ability to have a pre-order and then have people from the community, like Sauce or the pizza joint, to, or who knows, deliver that? Yeah, if they're thinking. Yeah. Okay, so to add on to that, because Councillor Drew, this is something he just brought up that I, I, my brain's on fire with it all of a sudden, but what if you had, but what if you had, you know, uh, a subway day? So as I'm coming in, you're letting me know as I'm getting my clubs and I'm getting my little golf cart that today is subway day. Would you like to place an order? We can have it out to you by X, you know, whatever. What a, ishness in Cardston. Skip the golf cart. Anyway, I that's I think that you know you could do a subway day. You could have a, a day or, whatever. Yeah. Like each day could be something. And I think, as Councillor Salk had brought up too, that's bringing those businesses back into it and giving them a little bit more love within this community and yet helping us out at the same time. I don't know. Yeah. I just I think it's a great idea. Well, it, it might be worth exploring. 
if nothing else. Well, in counselor court, you might bring this up in your next meeting with the, with the golf course advisory, just to see what their thoughts were, because we brought it up in the last two years. Yeah, we could. Anthony will be there, I'm sure, so we could talk about it and you know, see what they think about it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> so right now it's uh, in progress. That's a good word for it. All right. 7D County Development Proposal. Jeff, do you want to talk to, about those? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so the county is um, <coughs> asking, so these are developments within what will be called the intermunicipal development area and the consultation area. So the county is looking for feedback on these. And the Councilor Selk and the mayor have had Thank you. a meeting with the county on these already. And then they're looking for any comment from the town. So no one has put comment from the administration's point of view on all three. Um, so you have the industrial over here, and then you have two that are related, same developer, but one's simply for residential lots and one's campground development. Um, so we have comments on all those. The question is, is there additional comments coming from the council that aren't addressed in the comments that no one's put forward? Councillor Sale, do you want to talk about the water? No way. Okay. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, Mayor, what you want me to com and maybe I shouldn't comment in public. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's fine. I like I like what they're proposing. Uh, I think in both cases, it would be beneficial to you know the community. At large. Obviously, it's a little disturbing that they've <clears throat> chosen to to do the one business out in the county when one of the principals has land on the east side of town right across the road that he's been, how can I put this, yeah. bending us over a barrel for a <laughs> while now. And uh, now he's moved across the road and is going into this business with a partner. That troubles me just a little bit. And in talking with Jeff and the mayor about this, in reality, they could put it on the town side of the bypass and actually save money in taxes and because infrastructure. Because the rate is lower. Yeah, in taxes and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But is that something for us to get all, you know, twisted about? And they said they want to be in the county, so let them be in the county, and we'll charge them seven times the rate for water. <coughs> I thought you were going to talk about water. Well. If they do go into the county, they're paying for all the mm -hmm. infrastructure that's going to have to go there. You have already spent money, like you said, for infrastructure for the property that he has now. And now there's no way, by golly, that we're going to pay for it again. So I feel the same with you, the council self. I feel like we're getting, we're getting took again. <laughs> Jeff, nothing else? Is this where we <coughs> buy the property back? And well, that, that's a different monster, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see what we can do there. But yeah. I, I think with that particular principle and that property, we'd have to visit the law firm of Dewey, Screw and Howe. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't heard that. <laughs> Counselor, we haven't heard that yeah. yet. They had another phone call. Yep. Now, it, Jeff, I guess my only question, beating around the bush on this, is there's probably no way that we can force the one principal to do something appropriate for the town, given that we're doing yeah. something for them. Yeah. You know, that, Hello. it really bothers me. Hello, you there? Yeah, I'm back. You're back. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Really I have no me. volume whatsoever coming from you people. I'm sorry. I'm fine. I can hear everything that's going on, so I don't know. You're fine. Turn up your bell tones. It bothers me. Yeah. We're still being, I don't know, played. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll try and bring that to a head here shortly, just so we know one way or another where we're at with it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that was for the county. Just to comment on it if I can, they are talking about 35 full-time jobs. 
something to consider. And I'm sure a fair number of those people would be living in town. Like, like I said, Councilor, I don't think that we have any strong objections to what they're doing. Yeah, I understand. It's just uh, troubling that the one principal has been playing us for a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I understand that. All right. So thank you for your input. 7E, the AUM letters, that was a letter. I'll never. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Now, the lot is very close to the river, and that's an issue. One thing that's come from this since we met is we have, and, and it's shown in your first map on the campground one, right. is that they did not design that campground to accommodate the St. Mary's water intake that's under the ground there. Right. So they're going to have to amend that because uh, it wasn't on their mapping. Mm -hmm. So Brandon sent them the mapping of our St. Mary's water line, which runs right through the middle of the proposed campground. So they're going to have to do some work to get a road where that is and give us easements on that, although there's an easement on the property anyway, so, um, so that we have our St. Mary's raw water line free of any of that development. So that's the only big change they're gonna have to make, is they are gonna have to redesign this in the light of that. that. And, and I believe the environment's gonna push them back from the creek quite a ways further. Yeah, yeah, that's too close to the creek. All right, so any question regarding that development? Somebody was saying maybe if we could get a path to the Gulf Coast and have some carts down below, it would be nice to have them use the Gulf Coast. Yeah. With them, you know, no matter what they do, if they go back, they're, they're looking at a, they're going to have to put holding tanks on there rather than a septic system, wouldn't you think? Yeah. To get rid of the, you know, the, the waste. The waste. Yeah. Does that come into the communication? Yeah. They, they have to show the county where they would be disposing the document, right. how they're storing it, where it would be disposed. Okay. Yeah. So they'll have to negotiate with us, hypothetically, and I guess there's other options, but uh -huh. they have to negotiate with us for disposal of that document. Okay. And they shall pay us oh, yeah. Yeah. a good rate. <laughs> 2,000 times. <laughs> Just you laugh, but it's about the truth. It's about the truth, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. Anyways, so that's what it, what transpired here. All right. So 7E, the AUMLA. Not yet. The four lot subdivisions still. Right? Oh, yeah. crumbs. Love it, four lot subdivisions. Okay, go for it. So this is just four country residential lots. So, so there's one interesting difference here. These, these ought to be proposed to be county water customers or with town water, so under the license agreement. Now, I had an interesting succession of emails with Murray on this, and I would actually like your opinion of it on this one. Under the new water agreement, there has to be an application for any new service area. Mm -hmm. Murray is contending that this isn't a new service area. How? It isn't? Yeah, because he says it's coming off the same license as being used for the Trecklewood subdivision. No, it's not. But I said it's a different developer yeah. doing a yeah. concurrent subdivision of multiple lots yeah. that needs new infrastructure run to the site. Yeah. It feels like a new service area to me. It is. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're not quite in agreement there, and you're going to hear that you ICF community members are going to hear this come up about the water agreement, mm -hmm. about making sure that's defined better, because I said we better make sure that's defined more thoroughly in the agreement then, because to me, that's a no-brainer new service area. Yep. <laughs> so Jeff, does it mean that you and uh, you and Mary need to reword that portion yeah, in the agreement? There, and then under the new agreement, and I would suggest we try and administer this under the new one, they need to send to us maximum water needs when it, at full build out, where it's coming from, where you're getting the license from, all that I think we should require that on this yeah. before they can supply water. Totally. Yep. I agree. Uh, we we'll uh, support you on this one. Okay. 
All right, can I go now to Sevani? <laughs> Okay, so that's the AUMA letter. It was uh, the response that we said we were going to send to AUMA after Tanya was there. Can yes. Can you talk about the meeting thing, the, the provincial thing response about having meetings? Did you talk about that? I've had this open and I can't, don't recall that the question was, is council permitted to close meetings to public to practice no, social justice? We didn't talk about that. I think we already passed it though, isn't it? Different we? item here. You're, we're in the item before that, Council. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, You're good. Uh, I'm getting lost there. You're good. Seven E. So that letter uh, is was drafted by Jeff, and Jeff, thank you for doing that uh, on my behalf. I read it, and we tweaked it uh, here and there a little bit. So what did you tweak on it, man? Uh, just, uh, just. Uh, a dis <laughs> first paragraph, a discussion, to have discussion or a discussion? Yes, there's a few things that was. Okay. It's a great letter. And Jeff, I think the, the uh, fourth paragraph is bang on. Yeah. I went and grabbed a couple, and I used MDA Wood Buffalo because you yeah. just brought it up, right? Yeah. So you got 635% yeah. higher. Yeah, isn't so. that un unbelievable? Is that... Uh, what I appreciate Jeff doing is propose, offering a solution to the problem yep. rather than just say there's a prob problem to point them in the right direction. They might not like it, but whatever. No, it's, our, it's our opinion. Do we need a motion to approve? <coughs> yeah, we need to approve it. I make, I make a motion to approve and send this fabulous letter. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Bangry still there? Councillor Bangry, yeah. did you okay. disappear? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so yes, okay, fine. Thank you. All right. So, what yeah. am I going to miss something if I you're, say. If you go to 7F, you're okay. Okay, 7F. Council meeting cancellation or changes. Okay. So, Jeff, you added that to the agenda for a specific purpose. We put this on today, and I know you haven't had a chance to review it, but here it is in a nutshell. With this whole COVID-19 thing, there's many communities whose councils aren't meeting. Yeah. That they feel they can't show, you know, an example of social distancing, or they, they are concerned for their own health that they have, a, you know, a compromised health. And so they're choosing to meet in a different way. Technically, under the <coughs> Act, you must cancel a meeting or change a meeting at a meeting. Right. So it means a couple of things. Right now, I think we're all reasonably comfortable to meet. There's no cases in the community. We're able to put a couple tables out, spread you out. I mean, if the other two councillors come, you guys will be up to here, but that's fine. We can deal with that. Um, but if, you, if all of a sudden there was a need to change, you would need to call a special meeting to then cancel or change your regularly scheduled meeting. Yeah. Um, so there's just a number of uh, technicalities, and I didn't know if there was a strong opinion around the table that you did not want to get together and meet in the foreseeable future, or to meet like for by electronic means or something, and to yeah. do it differently, or if you're reasonably comfortable right now. Okay, my, my opinion is probably because I'm uh, in the elderly section, so is Councillor Bond, so is Councillor Bangry. And so, uh, so sooner or later, and I have at home uh, very elderly, and sooner or later, the less, the less uh, contact I have, the better it will be for both of us. So I know that we changed our, uh, our council kind of procedure so that we can have electronic meeting. So Zoom is probably one uh, way to do it or whatever else you may have to offer us. But I think if there ever was one case reported in a community, I don't want to be in meetings anywhere. And I don't know how you feel about it. Agreed. But I agreed, but I do also feel that um, we need to carry on business. Agreed. I feel like there there is technology. 
It's yeah. okay to use it. It works. We can easily have a council. Many of us, our offices are doing it. You're Skyping in, you're yeah. Zooming in. So yeah. then it's, it's we, we still have business that we have to handle, and I think it can easily be done in today's society. I agree. In fact, I think most of our other committee assignments are doing it that way. We're all doing Zoom or and, double golf. Yeah. And I'm glad when we did the review, we added that Agreed. to our policy. So it's not that we need to reinvent that wheel. That wheel is in place. Yep. So, so I'll just talk about some of the subtleties of electronic meetings. So when you have an electronic meeting, one of the risks is they're not open to the public. So that's one of the criticisms of them, right? So we all get on a Zoom meeting, and how do you engage the public? So what the Act basically says is I would be here. Yes. And I would be part of the meeting. And if people would like to come sit in the gallery, they can because I'm a member of the meeting at the town office where and when we said the meeting would take place. Right. So that's how you satisfy that to a large degree. The Shem would be here taking minutes. Mm -hmm. I right. would be here. Or, uh, you know, hopefully we're both healthy and that's all good. Um, and, and that's how we would conduct the meeting. So that way it's still open to the public. And uh, if they wish to attend, they can. And we still take minutes and all that. And the act is starting to allow for a lot more of, I mean, the act is much more yeah. accommodating with that than it used to be. Hmm? We need to extend. Oh, you do need a motion to extend. Oh, gosh. Make a motion to extend till 8.30. Yeah, please, not past that time. Thank you. <laughs> Are you in favor? Please, no. Yep. All right, yep. thank you. Mayor, if I could share what? anything I'm missing in the what? Question, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, Question, sorry. go for it. What's the capability of, of what, what, what is the capability that we have right now with this system? Because it's very clear on my uh, cell phone. I, I appreciate this being uh, zoomed in on me. Well, we can have you all on the phone. That's no problem at all. That, that capability is no problem. But, I mean, we got better ways to do that now. Like with the Zoom technology, we simply email you all into your devices. You click the link, and we're all in a meeting together. Yep. And I just yep. put my screen up there. Right, and you, everyone, we all, you're all in your homes. Interacting. And we're doing our thing, right? These so, don't have cameras and speakers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right here. The little ones, the, the little ones have a camera. That's what this is right yep. here? Yep. Yeah, so, so okay. uh, I have the same as yours. Yours has yep. a camera? Yep. Yeah, so, so that's the fine. the risk with that, and I don't want to use Council Barton as an example, is it's an assumption that everyone has the same understanding of the technology and how to use it, right? Which isn't always safe. So we need to do a trial <laughs> round. Yeah, we'll do a test. Okay. So what I, I just want to be clear, though, Shem, is if they choose to do, we have to give the public notification that they are meeting electronically, but we don't need a resolution. Is that the case? It's, it's in it. I believe it. Um, I believe if you choose to have, so a council, I'll just read what the act says on part of this. A council meeting may be conducted by means of electronic or other communication facilities if notice is given to the public of the meeting, including the way in which it is to be conducted. So that seems to be pretty clear that we would simply say the upcoming meeting of council will be at the town hall. You know, you can come, but it will be conducted electronically through video conferencing. Yeah, and I mean, just put... Just put it under the COVID-19 extraordinary yeah. circumstances. I mean, none of us want to infect our families, right? Yeah, it just says the facilities must enable the public to watch or listen to the meeting at a place specified and the designated officers in attendance at that place. So, the yeah. so would you like to entertain your next meeting yeah. or do you want to wait until that trigger? Is there a trigger in which you'd like to change? How I don't know that we should wait for the trigger. I think the trigger is already there. There is that disease floating around. And with the snowbird coming back, I'm afraid that there's more chance now than ever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So are you okay if we try it next, next meeting? Sure. All right, Can thanks. Yeah. Um, sure. Sure. I'm just thinking for April 14th, we could potentially just have the auditor do it from their office in Lethbridge. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I can. We did in our meeting yesterday is we had um, the auditor just call in. Okay. Yeah. Why yeah, not? We'll give that a go. 
We'll yeah. put out notice right away that it will be same time, be same place, but yeah. by electronic means. Yeah. The dogs allowed. And then uh, please. And what we'll do is we will run a test on this in the next few days. Okay. Yeah. So we'll email you all and say, hey, see if you can see me. Figure it out. Because we'll need to get the business version of the software as well. Yep. So we'll get that all going. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, on the eight committee and report, well, they're a little slim this time around, so I don't exactly know how many of your meetings are canceled, mine are canceled. There is no meetings and we've uh, until uh, whenever. So I don't know about South Grove, what's, what's the decision there? Well, our quarterly economic, or our economic summit was canceled. I know. And we're doing all of our exec meetings by Zoom. Right. So we pretty well all in the same kind of situation. So mm -hmm. we. Uh, so, what I mean by the Zoom, so. so, how do you want us to report those? Well, that wouldn't be until the second meeting in April, and we just. I mean, I still send you your agenda packages. That doesn't change. No, no but I mean, for us. For example, we don't go to meetings, so we don't submit any any. Uh, yeah. Just <coughs> submit what you have, and if yeah. you don't have it, then yeah. I only send it out across what I get. I'm not following up with you to see if you went or not. No, I mean it's just to know how we flow stuff. Yeah, well, it's the same as we do now, Mayor. When we except we we are electronic, so that's about all, right? Yeah, I mean. Yes. We'll receive minutes of meetings and then we'll forward them to John. Yeah, okay. That's what so, I did just the other day. Oh, the yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But anyway. Uh, questions? We had a break. Let's go on the correspondence then. There's a AUMA a letter to Mr. Minister Madhu. Uh, there is a AUMA notice from the president. You can see that. Um. This working, uh, I, it was refreshing to hear uh, Premier Kenny saying that uh, they were meeting with uh, President of a UMA and RMA, so good for them. Maybe they're hearing the what we're trying to tell them. I just have a question, Mayor. Go ahead. On the letter from AUMA to Minister Madhu. Yeah. It says the deadline for intermunicipal collaborative framework should be extended to April 1, 2021. Uh, no. I know. Well, I, I, I mean, think our. I don't know if we want to make a point of this with AUMA, but we could say, that's fine, you can do that. But when it comes time to pay whatever's agreed to in a monetary sense in those agreements, it's retroactive to yeah. April Correct. 1, 2020, yeah. because we Correct. want them to pay the piper. We don't want them putting this off no. another year. No. Yeah, we're not waiting, we're just deferring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe that's a response we could have or, or something we could forward to Tanya. When we met No. including of our ICF. We're so close. It seemed to be that we just want this put to bed next month for sure. So uh, it's up to you completely. We could send a response and say our concern about suggesting that is it delays the appropriate payments for another year. So provided they're retroactive on what is negotiated. I don't have any problem sending that feedback. It may not apply to us, but it, it, it also would hurt to send feedback. So I'm wondering if we should maybe add it to the letter we're sending, you know, that letter, oh, right, right. and and just say, and, uh, or, or like a... Yeah. P.S. <laughs> An addendum. Postscriptum post or something. I'll make that resolution that we add, make an addendum to the letter to Tanya regarding the deadline for ICF agreements. Okay. Thank you. Good. All in favor? Thank you yep. very much. Yes. Yeah.
Okay. All right. So notice from the president. Okay. 10C, Deputy Minister Paul Winnick, Alberta Municipal Affairs updates. And then we need to go in closed session. Okay. Closed session. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so there is a little bit of the legal we already talked about.